Hello, everybody. This is Kelly and Jim with the X-Files Preservation Collection, and we are honored to be talking to Mark Kudra today. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Glad to be here. <laughs> so, Mark, um, you are a set dresser. Can you right. tell us exactly what a set dresser is? Yeah, basically what we do is uh, we work for the production designer, and in, in the X-Files, it was Corey Kaplan. and uh, she basically oversees the whole look of the show with the directors and the creators of the show. So in, in the X-Files case, it was Chris Carter and then whatever directors um, we had, they, they kind of replay, they got to rotate through the, the different episodes, you know, and I'm trying to think, um, what's his name? Uh, Tim Manners, he, he did a lot of the episodes. He was also yes. produced. And he was a great guy and he passed away. I'm, I'm sad to say like, I don't know, probably 10 years ago or something, yeah. um, but wonderful guy. And he grew up on the, on the crew. His family was in, in film and television. And um, years later I did a show with Rebecca Romaine called Pepper Dennis and his brother was the producer. And so we ended up talking and, uh, and Chris, uh, uh, Kim was just a great guy, you know. He just was a lot of fun. He was really just chill, and and uh, and he like he grew up. He was a grip, and then he became an editor, and then he became a director and a producer. So, and he was a, a a big part of the X Files, you know. He was involved in producing a lot of episodes, and uh, he, I saw him all the time, you know. So, awesome. Yeah. yeah. One of our greatest regrets not being able to meet him. Not yeah. we didn't get to meet him in time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he was a cool guy, man. And um, so basically what I do is I work for the production designer, Corey Kaplan in the next round's case, and they develop plans with a set designer and everything's kind of overseen by the director because he's basically the captain of the ship. So um, we look at the plans, she gives us the plans, and then we um, the construction team builds the sets, the walls. We're talking like interior sets and stuff like that. On this stage, in the X Files case, it was uh, stages five and six at Fox Studios, and we had across from us stage eight, which was vacant a lot of the time. So we would go for swing sets; they call them over there. So, like in that one Hollywood Babylon episode, mm -hmm. where they had uh, the graveyard that was all over on stage eight. Mm -hmm. You know, when they had the um, it was kind of with uh, what's his name, Gary's, um, that guy, the actor, I forget his name. Uh, Taya Loney was in that. That was uh, Dave's wife. Yep. She was in that episode too. So she was around a lot and a uh, very nice lady. Very chill. I believe that was Gary Shandling, was Gary it? Shandling. That's right. Yeah. He there was we go. Of, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And um, so that was done over on stage eight. But our primary sets, like Mulder's house um, and all the hospital corridors, were on stage five and stage six. Uh, we also had some swing sets on stage six, but like the FBI Skinner's office, that was all over on stage six. And like the um, the surgery rooms, those were on stage six. So, And they even had like, it was the way that, um, it's laid out at Fox is across the street is the theater where the um, movies were shown like back in the day, like in the 40s and 50s, you know, yeah. they would have screens on the lot there. And they had this glass case that had all these Oscars in it from all the different movies from Fox. You know, I'd go in there and just eat my lunch. There was never anybody in there. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's a trip, you know. But yeah. uh, anyway, so that's what I do. I help design and build the sets with the production designer. We go out and we get the furniture that's required from uh, either purchasing it or we rent it from different prop houses in Los Angeles. We bring it back to the set, put it in. Uh, we hang the lights, put in the rugs. Put pictures on the walls, um, dress the kitchen, you know, with, uh, you know, groceries and things like that, and uh, dress the refrigerator, you know. Uh -huh. And in the case of uh, the surgery room, we put all the medical equipment in there. Uh, there's a place called Alpha Medical in North Hollywood where we got all that stuff from. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so, um, and then like video playback, that was done by them also, like for a little, uh, for the video screens, like they're doing surgery and stuff, you know. And what's also interesting is um, I got a lot of access to the warehouse where a lot of the stuff was stored, you know, for the show from episodes of uh, that had already passed. You know, like for instance, 
when the show started, it started in Canada in 93. Yeah. And, uh, they did five years in Canada. And then, um, you know, Dave's contract was up for renewal. And he's like, hey, you know, I don't want to do the show unless you move to Los Angeles. He actually told me this because um, he goes, I got my family in Los Angeles. and My kids are there. I never get to see them. And he's like, and the weather sucks here in Canada, you know. And I'm, I'm like, I, I get it, man. I said, thanks for bringing the show down. You know, and he's like, you're the first person that says me. <laughs> really? That's not right, you know. But um, anyway, so uh, when they renewed the contract, uh, his free contract it was 90, 1998 in the summer. And they started packing everything up in Canada and put it in these big trucks and they brought it down to Fox. And that's why I came in. I, they called me and my buddy, uh, John Nerlich, was my boss. And he said, hey, I got this show. You know that X file show, you know? I said, yeah, I've seen it. And he goes, yeah, they're bringing it down from Canada. And he's like, do you want to work on it? I'm like, are you going to work on it? He goes, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm in, you know? So uh, I started and, and me and uh, him and a few other guys just started unloading these trucks. And um, the trucks were full of all, all the sets, the set walls. It was probably like, I want to say there was at least uh, three or four 53 foot trailers that were back in the wow. back box and it was just full of everything you know like all the sets they'd already built up in uh, canada they shipped them all down there and they gave us these little notebooks that uh had all like the, the, there were set stills basically you know had all pictures just, that's how they went together everything you know so so we put it all together and then we shot it here you know and it was uh it was a real blessing in my life you know i was on the show for two and a half years and met some great people and i saved some money and and uh, I was finishing college at the time, so I was, I was pretty busy, you know. The show was a busy show. I mean, we had a lot of locations, and um, I was also going to school on the weekends and evenings here and there, you know. So, But uh, anything I can do to help you guys with this uh, museum, let me know, you know. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see one of those notebooks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they were white notebooks. I remember they had photos. and. We were kind of making fun of the Canadian people because they had these like weird hair colors and stuff. Well, look at this guy, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just some cross town rivalry, you know, just messing around. But it was, uh, they were pretty explicit as far as like what went where and okay. everything was had to be reestablished because it was already established in the show for five years. So, so basically, once the uh, the set walls went up, we went ahead and we we set everything aside. We unpacked everything like paintings furniture everything went by the set you know right like the set was on stage five for instance boulder's apartment like his couch would be there it was all wrapped up and then we get everything together in one place by the set so once the uh the set walls were up the painters were done taping everything and painting then all the furniture and rugs would go in furniture and it would just be you know just like a, a pretty good uh uh organized way to do it you know yeah so, kind of yeah. like state it's kind of like staging a house almost pretty much the same yeah yeah so, but uh what else um yeah so that's kind of how it went together and then i think i think that was the prep period we i don't know how how long we prepped that for before i think we had like a about a month i want to say before we started shooting again so we had like a month to get all the sets ready you know and then they were working the writers and stuff were working on the scripts and once we got our first script, um, you know, it was about a week later we were shooting. Um, well, real quick for our followers, we should probably um, establish the difference between a prop and a set dressing. Mm -hmm. Now, let me know if this is correct. My understanding is a prop is anything that's physically used in, the, in, in a scene or written into the script and everything else is set, correct? Well, yeah, yes and no. It's a prop is something that an actor touches. Yep. In other words, if you're a prop guy, you're going to give uh, Mulder his watch, his cell phone, whatever jewelry he wears. Um, and, and if it's something like, if there's, there's a cooking scene or something where he's handling, you know, knives and, and cutlery, you're going to, props is going to take care of that, you know. But we worked that all out before they shoot, obviously. And, uh, if there's any like gray areas, we'll we'll figure it out. Who's going to do right. what? So, right. dressing is just basically 
we're, we're doing the sets, you know, and what he walks into and, and, um, you know, so. all right. I think, uh, I think just for, for information's sake, um, the, the, the sets themselves are, are important to actors because it helps Absolutely. them uh, do a better performance, you know, I like it, about the time, about season seven, it was 99, about 99, episode one of Star Wars came out. And we were a concern that maybe they were going to do away with sets, you know, like they were going to do everything CGI that was going that direction. But um, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think some of it will, but I think actors need that environment to really, you know. Yeah. Absolutely, they do. Kind of feed off it, right? So it, right. Feels, so it feels real to them. Yeah, exactly. They, they go into a house and they go, oh, yeah, okay. And they, they just become that, it's easier for them to become that character unless as opposed to if they're working on a cgi in front of a green screen and they have a, a chicken wire table there and they're supposed to believe that that's a table and you know what i mean it's kind of it's different you know right. so absolutely right it is expensive you know to do sets i mean it's not cheap you got all the materials involved the labor and, and um that's why a lot on x files a lot of times we went on locations we had a lot of locations we had uh two five ton trucks that were for set dressing all the time. And often we had four that were loaded with, uh, you know, uh, hardware kits, uh, uh, electrical kits, ladders, furniture pads, you know, all the stuff that we use to go to a location. And we went up to Lancaster, the desert, a lot out there. And you guys, I'm sure you know that. So, but uh, I spent a lot of time out in Lancaster. And that gas station, I forget what episode that was in, where they had what it shakes and the, the UFO goes by, you know? It was yeah, this, yeah, I believe. Yeah, I can't remember the, the title of it. <laughs> I got my six and seven episodes over here. I, I bought them recently. I've been watching them. So, but uh, anyway, we blew that thing sky high. It was so cool, man. I think it oh. was bigger than I anticipated. <laughs> 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 we did freaking blue, man. It was like. <sighs> It's like a nuclear bomb went off, you know, a little too wow. much. So, but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry to mean to go off on a rabbit trail. No, um, no, it was fine. So you work um, on season six and seven. Were you also on five? No, I wasn't. That was in, in Canada. Okay. And uh, I was on six, seven and a part of eight, half, halfway through eight when Robert Patrick was coming in. Right. And you worked on the movie, right? No, yeah. I didn't work. Okay. No, I mean, the, the one that came out in like 90, uh, 98? 98, yeah, it came out in 98. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what I know about that is there was a crew, crew of guys, some of whom I, I know, they were uh, working on that movie, and they were, uh, they were hoping they were going to the TV show, but that's not what happened. I'm not sure why, but they, uh, I was blessed enough to get on the TV show. And, yeah. and, Right. Yeah, it's really cool. I didn't realize at the time, you know, like how cool the show was, you know. Yeah. I just because I worked on a lot of shows before that and a lot after, but um, once I got on the show, I realized like, hey man, this is a this is a, a really cool script, you know. These this writing's good and 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 what happened was also, uh, you know, when you take film permits in Los Angeles, it's a public uh, information thing. So we would have people showing up at our locations. They would go online and figure out where we were shooting, and okay. there would be, you know, thirty or forty people there at a location, you know, to just wanting to watch us film and stuff, you know. Yeah. Jim would have been one of those people if we lived in California. No, absolutely. <laughs> I would have been there with the tent and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Little camera, you know, video camera and stuff. Yeah, it was it was cool though. I mean, um, we shot out at a Will Rogers State Beach and all over Griffith Park, Lancaster Desert. So, like I said, we had trucks that were ready to, to do a lot of location work all set up. And, and at times, you know, I was on the core crew. I was the first one of the first guys hired when the show came to L.A. And, um, you know, at times we had like 20 guys on our set dressing crew. But there was about six people that were core crew. But the rest were day players, they call them. And then sometimes they stayed on for weeks, you know, because we were so busy, you know, it was such a busy show. Yeah. Yeah. How was it working with the crew? I've heard that it was all that 
that whole, you know, it's a big family, that that was actually the way it was there. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. Um, uh, Jillian was really nice. I used to talk to her a lot. And um, Dave was nice. Um, uh, the key grip, uh, the gaffer, oh God, Juno. And um, the caters were cool. I mean, we all worked together. We all worked long hours together. We had craft service. They were sweet, a bunch of really nice girls. Um, Terry Bring was our one producer. He was a jokester. He was always, he had like one of these uh, like little fart things that always made farts. And yeah. <laughs> he walked by an actor, he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody knew that about him. And um, everybody was really nice. You know, the Teamsters were great. You know, I had a lot of fun with the Teamsters. So, uh, you know, um, it was a really good crew. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it yeah we heard we heard that a lot from a lot of other actors and stuff that, you know, it was it was just down to earth, family oriented, you know, um, yeah. uh, the episode Arcadia. That's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, Arcadia. The, um, the I can't remember the actor's name, but our um, but his character was uh, Big Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. yeah. Abe. yeah yeah it was it was abe yeah yeah i can't remember his last name but he he just he just had glowing reviews he loved being on it yeah he was a nice guy i remember him um big they shot mike. that yeah big mike they shot that show that particular episode at a uh a, a, like a gated housing development yeah. up by lake sherwood off the um the 101 freeway north of los angeles like west lake village area yeah and it's really nice up there it's very expensive and that was just a house that was vacant so we um we got up there like uh three or four days before they shot it and we packed a bunch of boxes up and i went up and i uh you know i made boxes like they were just moving in and put the labels on them and everything and we brought out the uh the basketball hoop that's such an integral part of the story you know that Mulder wants and the uh we had about three or four of those uh uh, mailboxes, you know, because he kicks it over. We had backup in case of probe or something, you know. Yeah. But um, I, I'm as a writer myself, I, I like that episode because I have a story that I'm working on, and it kind of it kind of takes on that whole idea of um, you know the people that are running everything up behind the scenes, you know, and and that's exactly. what that guy Ugalak was, you know, he was one of those deep state kind of guys, you know. Yeah behind the scenes controlling everything and calling the shots and so but um yeah that was a cool episode i i liked it yeah it's pretty funny because uh, you were saying about you know like the gated communities and all that you know yeah. um up here where we live we've got a few of them up here that look oh, yeah. like that you know oh, i could never live there yeah and no, and yeah. the rules and stuff are crazy yeah i like the rules yeah yeah, and that scene where he's uh, Gugalak is is reading the CCNRs to yep. Dave and Jill. You know, nope, sorry, don't you can't have a basketball court. Next thing we'll have a bass boat and everything else in the driveway. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 Well, the actor, big uh, big Mike. Yeah, we met him before, and uh, he he uh, he said that when they poured all that stuff all over him and everything, you know, when he was in the sewer and stuff. He said he loved it. He said he wanted to wear it all the time until it started to dry. Oh, yeah. Then he couldn't wait to get it off. Yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. We dug up the front yard of that house too. I remember we had a backhoe and everything. Yeah, that was cool. Um, yeah, it was a lot of work too because I remember it, all the mess we made in the house. We had to clean it all up too. Like when the, that monster thing goes up the stairs, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that the footsteps that. going up the stairs. The blood yeah. spatter on the fan, the ceiling fan. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, but, that's got to be something. When you destroy something, then you have to clean it and put it all back and clean it all up and everything. Yeah, we had to make it all nice again. We, we had the painters come in and paint the house and the inside. And and uh, the house was, I think it was for sale. And it was vacant at the time. So oh. didn't have any furniture in it, but uh, we had to bring some furniture in, you know. Yeah. So uh, it had some yeah. pretty sweet hardwood floors, though. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I'm sure someone else is living in it now, but uh, have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea that they're living in that house. Yeah, right. Exactly. They they probably do. The neighbor has probably told them that. Hey, yeah, they filmed an X Files episode in your house. Really? Wow. Uh, 
But uh, that guy, that actor, Mike, as you said, his name was Abe. I've seen him in a lot of stuff. He's a he's a busy guy, a working actor, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's an extremely he was an extremely nice guy. He was very fond yeah. of the X Files and everybody that worked on it. Yeah. You know? It was fun. I, exactly. I'm working on it too, actually. You know, I, the part that I did, I just I was just one of the guys, you know. But uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, and um, I have a lot of good memories about it, you know. So and awesome. everybody. I didn't have any problems with anybody, you know. So um, Chris was really nice. The actors were nice. Um, God, there's so many memories. You know, I worked um, the episode with Lily Tomlin and Ed Asner where they're ghosts. Yeah, the, yep. ghosts the, Chris, the Christmas. The, the Christmas one. Yeah, that was cool. I remember that because I had worked on a TV show with Ed Asner right before that, like maybe a year before. And um I ran into him outside the stage. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? And he's like, hey, how are you, Mark? And he remembered my name and everything. And, and I said, I'm good. And I said, what's been happening? He goes, oh, I'm just looking for work, you know? And I go, <laughs> uh, <laughs> started going into this all like, I got to get some work going, man, you know? And I go, well, didn't hard rain just come out? And he goes, yeah, but I shot that a year ago. And anyway, it was good to catch up with him. And, I, and he goes, he told me, he was one of the guys that told me, he goes, always put your money away. Don't, don't you know? You make money and then you guys blow it, you know, and then you're stuck, you know. And I said, Yeah, it was one of the guys that, you know, kind of gave me some advice as an older man to a younger yeah. guy. So I rem yeah, I rem I remember when uh the commercial the trailer came out for uh the, the Christmas episode of that yeah. that one. And I was like, No way, they got Lou Grant. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe it. He was cool, he's a good actor. So uh yeah, I thought he was good and he's he's like a smart ass, you know. And uh, Lily Tomlin played his wife. And, uh, yep. Yeah, that was a cool set. We did that set on stage five. And uh, it was a big set. And uh, we had the big chandelier we put up in it. And then all those books with the books that come out of the bookcase when she's yeah. looking around for that certain book, you know. That was all. That was special effects. They do stuff like that. So, But uh, we set everything up for him. We built the set and put all the books in there and all the, the old rugs. Those came from a place called Omega cinema props in Hollywood and uh, they're actually just uh, they just moved to downtown Los Angeles from their original location so but uh, yeah it was a great episode I enjoyed that one and we shot up in Piru the exterior portion of it there was this old like historic house up in Piru which is uh, it's north of Los Angeles up by Magic Mountain so uh, it was cold it was like winter time we probably shot that if if it aired in uh, around Christmas, then we probably shot it in uh, October, I imagine. Right. So it was pretty cold at night, and uh, but it was it was neat. It was an old house, and, uh, like the exterior where they pull up in the car, you know, uh, older and scully, and uh, it was just it was cool. It was a good episode. I remember that because I saw people I hadn't seen in a while. It was nice. Hi. Yeah. What was your favorite episode? You got a favorite episode? You got the most memories? Um, I remember the uh, the one where uh, the guy turns into the wolf. Uh, what's it called? Oh, geez. Hang on a second. Let's see my hand. That's season one. Oh, I got my DVD here. Let's see. Uh, I like, I think probably my favorite episode is the one where Mulder actually sees his daughter or his sister. Which one really? is that? Uh, two fathers, one son. Mm -hmm. The Rain King, I remember that one. Drive. Oh, I remember, um, wow, The Unnatural. Actually, Dave wrote that one. Yep, yeah. he did. That was the one where uh, we went to this. Um, I don't know. It's hard. I have to think about it to answer your question. Yeah. Oh, mm. God, so many good ones, you know. Yeah. Uh, but that that actually that episode that Dave uh, wrote, um, yeah, natural. That was uh, we shot that. We actually built a baseball field out in um, like Simi Valley area, and it was the land was like you went down this road and there was a gate. It was like mobile oil corporation on the land and 
it was like this vast area that like just rolling hills like north of los angeles and i'd never been up there before and um i didn't realize there was so much vacant land up there so basically we went out there and with our trucks and everything and they kind of leveled some of the grass area and we built a baseball diamond we shot up there wow. really cool you know yeah. and then we had the old bus that they drove around in the guys the baseball players and um, that was just a cool episode because i like vintage stuff you know yeah. and had a lot of, it was like took place in the 40s so all the, all the mm -hmm. wardrobe 40s you know pretty and impressive you actually built built a baseball field yeah i know yeah. It, that's yeah. amazing it was pretty cool man well, and then they got, i mean why like, not they build a baseball field and they blow built you know stuff up <laughs> you know i don't know i just figured they went to an actual baseball field to shoot those scenes or something that's what i thought so yeah. that's i'm pretty impressed by that yeah well it's hard to find a baseball field that you that like that like yeah because so everything's so dense you know so mm -hmm. yeah they could have shot it somewhere else i guess but maybe they just wanted to to be away from everybody and kind of just do their own thing you know they had horses too i remember we had a bunch of horses in that episode the the, the ku klux klan guys they rolled up on the horses you yeah. know and yeah. all that so um but uh, that was a cool episode man and he he kind of like he was really dave was really involved with that episode i remember that he was always behind the camera watching and and um and acting too that must have been a lot of work for him you know so yeah yeah, not a lot of people can do that, you know, uh, you know, write the episode and then, you know, star in the episode and direct the episode. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of work. And it, and not only that, you got to be there when they're editing everything, too. So, you know, so he was probably prepping for a, the next episode while he was editing the one he just did, you know. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot of people yeah. don't realize how much like when you when an actor or, or director does a movie, he'll like they'll they'll cast it they'll you know scout all the locations they'll hire the crew they'll shoot the thing and then it goes into editing after that you know and, and it's a it's like a two-year process for a film almost you know it can be you know depending on the film how big it is you know yeah. so it's a lot of work it takes up a lot of time in a person's life you know, to do something like that yeah there's a lot involved and you got to be completely dedicated to it right. yeah it's a big endeavor so is that all X-Files stuff you guys have behind you? Oh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, this is just, yeah, this is just a little bit. This is a little bit of just the decor we got, you know. Um, yeah, this is all mainly. Um, there's some of the props are back there. Yeah, there's some. There, there's some stuff. Or Kilobyte and Chink cool. is back there. And yeah, if you, uh, yeah. if you can see over here in the wall where it says, the, it says be healed. Uh-huh. Underneath. That's Chris Carter's laptop that he wrote the pilot episode on. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, he donated that to us, you know. That's a cherished thing. But yeah, this is all props and stuff from multi episodes. Wow, look at that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So what else do you guys want to ask me? Is I'm not sure. Is the episode, you know, with the megaphones is that a six or seven up i'm no nope, that's earlier ah oh well i wanted to ask about that episode because that's one of my favorites but that was before you before yeah. you started on the show yeah that's earlier see my know, encyclopedia I, <laughs> I will tell you this that i was at the warehouses a lot we had two warehouses in Culver city for uh the show where whenever we would finish an episode that we would take the stuff you know whatever it was for the sets and and even props, we would share with props too. So I, uh, I along with my cohorts, we had that little cart that that guy. Oh, oh no, really? I know, we, I know that, what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. That, and creeps that episode creeps her out. <laughs> that little guy in that cart. That one creeps me that out. Yep. So that whole, that 50s music and all that, man, the old cars. And, yeah. Yeah, that you're was in that all, screech of that cart. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's an amazing prop to have, though. Uh, well, we what we do is we would set up boxes, and when we were bored, we'd go over there, and uh, we would just one of the guys would get in the cart, you know, put his legs in there, and we would just like push him and uh. slam the boxes, man, <laughs> to crash, demolition <laughs> derby, you know. Yeah, <laughs> there was a lot of shenanigans going on that day. But, uh, like 
yeah, we had a lot of cool stuff in the in the warehouse, and it's probably a lot of cool stuff. I I don't know where it is now. Maybe Chris has it or some of the producers, you know. But it'd be cool if you guys could get it, man. You know, people could yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, we're we're picking away one one item at a time. We're trying to get it. Yeah, we're picking away at it. You know. Yeah, yeah cool. I I saw your uh, your website. It looked like you had a lot of clothes and stuff from wardrobe. You know. Yeah, we got a lot of clothes, a lot of, um, I still have a lot more to add to that website. We have a lot more to add, you know, I mean, X-Files is, you know, literally, and this is no joke. It's, it's almost 24 seven here. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. we're trying to build that museum, you cool. know, you guys have a warehouse space or something or yeah, you can kind of say that Yeah, we do, you know, um, and it keeps growing and growing and growing yeah good and awesome that's that's so cool like i say anything i can do to help let me know you know fantastic i run across anything like um i can't sell the scripts because like i, I have legal like yep. legal reasons you know but i could like maybe loan them out to you or something you know if that would help could... yeah you know well, you know we'll figure that out down the road yeah. You know, and then, you know, when, when we open, you know, you're more than welcome. We, we give you the biggest invite. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I would love to see that. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be really cool. You get tripped out memory. Yeah. I think, I think that about covers everything. Yeah. That about covers everything. Okay, cool. Well, let me know if you guys want to do it again. I'm more than open to do it. And, uh, you know, I'll look at some of these episodes again too and see if I can remember things, you know. Awesome. Great. I yeah. appreciate your time. Have you guys ever seen this magazine? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we have seen that magazine. <laughs> yeah. They gave it to us, so it was pretty cool. I'm actually in that one, so. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of magazines, so I'll ha I mean, I may not have looked inside that magazine, but. There's yeah, there's so much stuff that we have that's you know, I mean, we couldn't put everything on the website, you know. I mean, it's just when we get it all set up, you know, it's it's gonna blow people's doors away. Good, that's awesome. Well, I'll be praying for it. Awesome, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks a lot, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very thank much. You.